Welcome to JC Yagi. This is my experience, my journey, my story with the Fira 4 Stark Audio Class D amplifier. <sighs> Good morning, folks. <clears throat> Cheers. Ah, morning coffee. Am I right? So today we're talking about the Stark Audio Fiera 4. Now this is a new Class D amplifier, but we can't really talk about the Fiera 4 without talking about the AD4 that was the previous model to the Fiera 4 that's been discontinued now. Now I gave very high praise to the AD4 uh, as a Class D amplifier. I just found that, and to this day, I still stand by the point that it doesn't sound like a Class D amplifier. And virtually every single person that I brought in here, like my friends, my buddies, my my employees, and so on, all of them have told me that it doesn't sound like a Class D amplifier. In fact, every single person that I've brought in to this space has so far preferred the 84 over the Fiera 4. But that's not to discount the efforts that Amir put into measuring the 84. The 84 was measured by ASR, and it was found that the output capability of the 84 didn't match up to the specs on the website of Stark Audio. So the promised output power was not delivered with the 84 according to measurements. However, it really baffled me. Like it shocked me. I was like, what? How is that possible? And let me tell you my reasoning as to why, because I still stand by the fact that the 84 is a great amplifier despite the measurements. Now I understand and I'm not rejecting the measurements once again to the ASR fans, but I have to state my positioning as well, and these are not excuses. These are real life situations that I test in. Now this video and my videos have always been subjective, and I don't try to hide that fact. But I do support objective measurements, and that's why often I send it off to the NRC for speakers and to the Soundstage Lab for measurements with the audio precision for the amplifiers, DAX, preamplifiers, and so on. But at the time, I was not able to with the 84, and I'm glad that ASR got to measure it. Now, I already heard that Audioholix had a unit, so I thought that Audioholix would be getting the measurements anyways. But it was a surprise to me that ASR got it to it first. Anyways, I still stand by the fact that Stark Audio should have posted the correct wattage ratings on their website. Now, to be fair, often manufacturers do overstate their specs on their website and their spec papers. Now, while this is a problem, and I do find that you know this time around, it was a tr too much of a drastic difference for Stark to justify, and I don't think it's an acceptable thing to do, I still decided to review the Fiera 4 because of how much I loved the 84, subjectively speaking. Now, not just me, but everyone that has heard the 84 in my space or has borrowed it from me has told me that they're just baffled by the claims of ASR's measurements. And again, I want to emphasize the fact that I am not trying to discredit ASR or their findings with their measurements. Measurements are measurements, and there's no reason for me to reject the measurements. However, I am saying that subjectively speaking, from my experience, there was no reason to doubt the 84's output capability, and we were all shocked at the same time when we found out ASR's measurements showed that the output power was not delivering as promised. The reason being is at the time of reviewing the 84, we were comparing it to the NADC298, which is a powerhouse. And all the friends that I've invited, and myself actually, all found the Stark Audio 84 to sound better, and not only that, it sounded nothing like a Class D amplifier, Comparing directly head to head with class AB amplifier like the Denifrips, it sounded more powerful from the stock audio side for both situations. It sounded more powerful than the NADC298 or the Denifrips Stalo. And there's a, literally a video on this channel of me and my friend comparing the two and my friend not being able to tell that the stock audio is a class D amplifier. However, honestly speaking, after ASR's video as the owner of the 84, I was very disappointed and let down. I debated on returning the unit, but I decided to keep it anyways because after a long debate, I still subjectively like it and I, every time I plug it in, I like it better than even the Fiera 4 or my NADC298 Class D amplifiers. In fact, the 84 is one of the two Class D amplifiers that I've ever heard that is not sounding like a Class D amplifier to my ears. Now this time around, I connected Stark Audio to Soundstage Labs to make sure that it was measured before it came my way. So the Fiera 4 has been measured and all the measurements will be posted in the description below and in the pinned comment section below. And according to measurements by Soundstage Labs, this time Stark Audio went the opposite route, meaning they understated or became more conservative with their output capability rather than overstating it. Which is a good thing and I do have to give a thumbs up to ASR and Amir for taking that step forward. However, when it comes to Fiera 4 and the sound quality alone, I do still prefer the 84. So what has changed from the 84 to the Fiera 4? 
Well, the biggest difference is the power supply. The power supply from the 84's dual toroidal transformer has been now changed to a switching power supply that has been shielded. Now, that is very common practice with Class D amplifiers and having a switching power supply. One of the key benefits and key thing that I liked about the 84 was the two chunky dual transformers, toroidal transformers. But Stark Audio states that the switching power supply has been implemented to get better measurements, but not only that, to get better sound, also for better performance, and also because some minor clients have been getting hum issues with the Toyota Transformer based power supply. And I do have to state that this is true, as I didn't get the hum problem in my listening space, but after the review, long after the 84 review, when I lent it off to some of my friends, very few of them did get a hum issue in their system. Stark Audio has also commented that the switching power supply is much easier to manufacture and takes less time to manufacture. In terms of features, function, and uh, aesthetics, it has largely not been changed from the 84 to the Fiat 4, meaning it's still a 4-channel amplifier that can be bridgeable into a uh, 2-channel with a switch on the back. Now another thing that made Stark Audio's 84 unique and still makes the Fiat 4 unique is the module. The Class D modules in the market is usually the three mainly used. In the market, ICE module is usually used, like PS Audio, or Hypix module, and now the Purify module that just came out not too long ago, about last year. Uh, but not many manufacturers, or at least I, I know of, makes their own Class D modules. Stark Audio is one of the few that makes their own Class D modules in-house, according to their claim. This, according to them, gives them the maximum flexibility on how they want the unit to sound. So, how does this all translate into sound quality? Well, the Stark Audio Fiera 4 at first time listen was a disappointment for me. Because going from the 84 to the Fiera 4, I still prefer the 84. Now the Fiera 4 does seem like it has more juice. It has more juice than even the NADC-298, but so did the 84. It's very intriguing to me how the measurements show differently and why we didn't suspect it was one of those reasons that the 84 sounded so much more powerful, driving speakers like the Kef LS50 Metas and the Bacard S400 Mark II without a sweat. And that can be said for the Fiera 4 as well. The Fiera 4 is able to drive the Bacard S400 Mark II, and it's a wonderful synergistic match with a speaker like the GR Research Exos Encore that I recently found. Now this was totally by chance, but when I paired the Exos Encore with the Fiera 4 from Stark Audio, the synergy there was just in heaven. It was like Hegel with Magnapan or Kev speakers, that kind of synergy. It was just a perfect match and the Exos Encore from GR Research just came to life. It just became so much better. Now upon inviting some of my friends over and listening to myself, um, we all found unanimously that the Fiera 4 was a better match with the Exos Encore than the AD4. But when it came to speakers like the Picard S400 Mark II, it was pretty much split right down the middle. The Fiera 4 was preferred by half of my friends, while 84 was preferred by me and some of my friends. So it was pretty much split right down the middle. While I prefer the more warmer characteristic of the 84 and the more overall natural tone, I found that the Fiera 4 was more extended and gave a more of a reference sound. However, I still wouldn't categorize the Fiera 4 as a totally neutral Class D amplifier. It still has a sound, and that sound is a slightly V-shaped sound, meaning it has a little bit more bass emphasis and a little bit of treble emphasis. It can get tad bright with certain recordings with certain pairs of speakers that's known to be bright. However, pairing it with speakers like Bocard or GR Research Exos Encore that is not known to be bright, the pairing just opens up the speakers and takes it even further. Overall, Fiera 4's sound quality is pretty balanced with a slight bit of emphasis in the bass and the high frequency to allow for a little bit more of a uh, exciting sound. However, the dynamics are great, everything is great, but I feel like the soundstage depth and the musicality is still to my pre preference with the 84. The 84 provides something that the Fiera 4 just doesn't, and that is musicality and emotion and depth in soundstage and width in soundstage compared to the Fiera 4. And that goes same to the NADC-298. The NADC-298 is a great class D amplifier and I get daily usage out of it just like with my 84. However, 84, I choose it every single time for music. The NADC-298 is more balanced and a more reference sound that is more analytical. And that allows me to assess my speakers very much easily and it's a more of a tool for me because it's so balanced and it doesn't really have a color of its own. And I'll link to my review of the NADC-298 in the link description below for you to check out because my experience with that amplifier has been nothing short of excellent. However, it's for different purpose purposes. Just like how you get a tube amplifier for that tube sound, the 84 is 
entirely different in terms of its musicality to the NADC-298 or the Fiera 4. Now the Fiera 4 is more on the categorization of the NADC-298 rather than the 84. In terms of musicality, I still prefer the 84 or tube amplifiers and such. However, the Fiera 4 does measure up better and it is more of a reference sound. Ultimately, however, both the NADC-298 and the Fiera 4 is still a Class D amplifier for me meaning that it still sounds like a Class D amplifier with a distinctive sound of that Class D sound that I know. The Fiera 4 still doesn't have the soundstage, the depth, and the width that the 84 has. It doesn't have the tone and the musicality, the warmth that the 84 has, and to me, it still sounds like a Class D amplifier compared to the 84. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I still prefer the 84 in terms of its sound quality, in terms of musicality, in terms of its depth and soundstage, and width and soundstage, but I still think that Fiora 4 is a great amplifier just like the NADC-298 in terms of a reference Class D sound that is very clean cut. And from my experience, just like the 84, Fiora 4 is able to drive practically anything in this place. So that's pretty much it from me. Thank you for watching and listening to my journey. Now, whether you believe Stark Audio as a company, whether you trust them enough anymore, that's entirely up to you, whether you give them a second chance or not. But I do feel like they are trying to make it better or trying to make it up with the Fiera 4. They have, they have been more open, but they have always been open to measurements. Uh, I do want to state that fact. I don't think they were really purposely hiding anything because they had a unit with Audioholics and they were open to measurements at the time. I even inquired about getting the 84 measured at the time and they were okay with it. They were perfectly happy to get it measured. So maybe I don't know exactly what went on there, but the Fiera 4 measures very good and as reported by Soundstage Labs. And I think they're trying to make it right and trying to be more transparent with their claims of output power and specs. Again, entirely up to you on whether you give them a second chance or not. But for me, I decided to give them a second chance because the 84, again, is one of two amplifiers that I've ever heard that doesn't sound like a Class D amplifier. And virtually everyone that comes in here that hears the 84 is very happy with it, very satisfied with it, and even prefers it over the Fiera 4 in a lot of cases, like I said in this video. So yes, measurements matter, but at the same time, it's not always everything. I mean, take names, you know, gear, for example. Name gear has like 50 watts, you know, 60 watts, but it's able to drive speakers like Magna Pan or Kefalos 50s no problem without breaking a sweat. That's because it's a high current device. Maybe that's exactly what's happening with the 84 with dual you know, Toyota Transformers, I wouldn't be surprised. But again, that's just claims coming from me with just speculations. The whole point being here is that yes, measurements matter, maybe wattage isn't everything, but at the same time, it is very clear that Stark Audio didn't post specs as they should have. So entirely up to you on whether what kind of conclusion you draw. I'm only here to share my experience and my journey. So that's pretty much it and my experience with the Fiera 4 and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace! Shoo.